as we always start off all these interviews. Could you give me your name and where are you from? My name is Irvin Dargan. I'm from Sunnyview, North Carolina. Excellent. Now, I already know, of course, that you've been an activist for a number of years, but and that's really not what we're talking about today. We're going to be talking about uh, what brings you into the movement as far as uh, the medical cannabis movement. I understand it, that uh, you have some health conditions that you have dealt with. Yes, it, um, it's kind of an unusual one, but um, is recognized in California as a, a legitimate medical marijuana need is for stuttering. Stuttering. Mm -hmm. That's something I deal with too myself. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? First, tell us a little bit about, about your personal experience first, if you could. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a typical case. 95% uh, of all stutterers are the youngest male in a, in a family uh, with several children. and. Um, it's fairly common to, for young children to start stuttering and then they, they grow out of it usually, you know, pretty quick. Um, but as some people do, I, I kept stuttering. And uh, it, was, it was probably because my family was, my older brothers were much older than me and it was just kind of a, kind of a psychological thing. And there's, there's other types of stuttering that are more physiological, but mine was, prim was primarily a, a, a psychological. Thing, which is very common. And I, I didn't have as severe a stutter as, as some people that I've heard, um, but it was it was a traumatic, um, constant fear in me as I was growing up. <clears throat> when I was in school, I couldn't read aloud in front of other people. Um, I couldn't really speak aloud in front of other people either. If there's any kind of pressure. Um, as I ended up going off to college when I was that age, um, it affected me about the same way, and there were some other things that cropped up, like I had trouble talking on the phone, uh, even had trouble saying my name, which is, uh, is a very traumatic episode. Um, so it was something I lived with for 20 years. So you say it's probably, it, it, it's really affected you, not emotionally, and it's affected you in your relationships and such, and I mean, I would, I know personally that quite often choose not to say things, you know, mm -hmm. choose not to be involved in conversations and all, you know, whenever the attention mm -hmm. would go towards the stuttering rather than what you mm -hmm. really want to say. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a frustrating experience and it, it makes you feel yeah, on the sidelines, it makes you feel stupid. It makes you feel um, just like you aren't a regular person, you know, because you can't speak, and it seems such a fundamental, easy thing for most people to do. And I remember how envious I was of people that could just speak what they wanted to say. That's probably the reason why you spend so much time behind the camera, huh? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I would think so. The people who are probably going to be watching this, they're not going to realize that, part, perhaps, that. Uh, and in a lot of the video that that we, that, uh, we shoot, you're behind the camera. You're you're there too. Mm -hmm. you know, you're responsible for a lot of what what happens here. Yeah, I, I tend not to to wish I had never been a stutterer because I think it it shaped my desire to communicate. You know, I did it's like this burning desire to communicate and to do whatever I could to express myself, and I, I think it came out in other ways with writing and, and, and photography and, and video work. Yeah. Yeah. Now, apart from the work that we're doing here, you're a professional videographer. You do, you do a lot of other things too, don't you? Yeah, I've done sales and industrial videos, uh, music, music videos, uh, artsy type things. And I ran a sound studio for a number of years too as the engineer. And you, uh, you, you've also become involved with uh, Patients Out of Time, your position there? Yes, I, I was very happy to be uh, included in the advisory board this this spring with with patients at a time, which is, uh, has been the largest nonprofit for for medical cannabis um, advocacy for patients and for and their main role has been to to host uh, conferences for the for the researchers and and doctors that have been doing have been doing investigations into cannabis as medicine both in this country and in Europe for a wide range of different illnesses, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's get back to the stuttering thing, though. Um, 
maybe you could tell me a little bit about how you come to find out about cannabis being effective for helping people with stuttering. Well, it's, uh, I didn't smoke cannabis until I was about 19 or so, because uh, I had some family, I had a family member that was, um, had a problem with drugs and all, and it seemed pretty strange to me when I was growing up, so I swore off all that kind of thing. I didn't even drink, you know. Um, but when I went off to college, uh, I met some people, and people had been wanting me to smoke for years, but I never, I never listened to them. And, but finally, um, I was amongst friends in college, and and they finally got got me to try it. And um, I had no reason to expect that it would affect my stuttering or anything like that. I had no no inkling that uh, that that would be a factor. But I did notice that that after I had 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 smoked cannabis that that I seemed to be more relaxed and I seemed to stutter less. I noticed that when I smoked cannabis, I was seemed to be more relaxed, um, and the words seemed to flow better, and I, I didn't seem so concerned and fearful and all those, those emotions that, that goes with it. Really? So you kind of basically kind of found this out for yourself first off, didn't you? Sure. I, I've noticed that a lot with people who start off smoking cannabis recreationally, as they, after they have been using for a while, they suddenly realize why they gravitated towards it because it helps them physically mm -hmm. and emotionally. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what you experienced. Yeah. Um, and I think it operated in. Uh, as I look back on it, I think the cannabis operated in two different ways. Um, there was. There was a psychological component of it. Mm -hmm. which um, I think involves the relaxation and and even may, maybe to a degree the what we've found out now about about PTSD in cannabis is that it helps you f to get past traumatic episodes and stuttering is a lot about traumatic episodes um, like when you can't say your name it's um, terribly embarrassing and humiliating and so you're talking about uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's the only way I could describe it is because when a conversation would come up and I would feel that I might stutter, it was, I feel like that was fueled partly by the remembrance of past episodes when I was humiliated and embarrassed and this sense of dread comes on and you, you start realizing there were words that are going to give you problems and you start trying to avoid them and um, it's, it builds up over time. These traumatic episodes build up over time. It gets worse and worse. And so that's how I think that cannabis might kind of help me forget those things uh, to get past it. And and also the maybe psychologically too, just the or maybe maybe more physiology physiologically the um, the rush of the subconscious mind to want to say something, um, to kind of be in overdrive and, and get ahead of the, of the mouth and the conversation is maybe part of um, the cannabis is able to slow that down too. But I also think it had a physical component because um, as you stutter, you get tense and um, therapists have told me that I built up a lot of facial and neck tension. Over, over the years, and, and I think that happens over the years of stuttering. You just, you get really tense, and cannabis is known to, re, to relax smooth muscle, like in the neck and throat and face. And so I think it does that too, and that, and that lack of tension in the, in the muscles, I would think, would, would contribute to um, easing off on that, on that, on that tendency to stutter.